This is Nathan Thornburg reporting for Time.com. My editor sent me to Russia recently to see how the country was doing ahead of next year's presidential elections there. What most people don't know about reporting in Russia is you don't go by yourself. You really need a team. Now, our team started with Volodya, the driver. He had a couple things uh, that you really would like to see in a Russian driver. First, he does not drink at all. And second, he had a Lada Sputnik uh, hatchback. Lada is a Soviet car maker that's still making vehicles today. And the cars are really cheap, really humble, and very, very tough. The perfect thing uh, for keeping a low profile in the countryside and being able to navigate some pretty rough roads. The second guy on the team was Yuri Kozarev. Uh, he's Time's award-winning war photographer. He spent the last five years on assignment in Baghdad, but he's actually born in Moscow. His family still lives there, and he'd been away from the country just long enough that he was also really happy to be there and find out what's happening in Russia these days. Uh, and we also used uh, a lot of local journalists along the way, like uh, the Tver Kerovan's uh, Boris Antropiev, who helped us uh, sort of find local sources and figure out which direction to take uh, to get to the next town. Once you have a team, the second thing you really need is cash. Lots of it. I had $100 bills stashed in money belts and luggage liners everywhere. You need lots of cash on the road because hotels and restaurants are expensive. Even though rural Russia remains one of the poorest parts of Europe, the average salary is somewhere just over $400 a year. The cheapest thing on the Russian road trip, however, is probably the best thing. In, in early autumn, it's the apples. They're for sale everywhere. They cost $3 a bushel. And as luck would have it, our driver, Volodya, was, was completely tireless pursuing the perfect apple. He ran from stand to stand, interrogated old ladies about the quality of their product. Uh, he dashed across the M10 highway, four, or five, six lanes of traffic, to see if the apples were actually sweeter on the other side. Finally, you need to pick a route to travel. So we followed in the footsteps of an 18th century Russian reformer, a guy named Alexander Radishev. He had written a sort of politicized travel log from Petersburg to Moscow. And even though he's not well known outside of Russia, he's very well known in Russia for having made a political argument based on the people and places that he visited. This route was perfect for us because it took us from the two capital cities, uh, Petersburg and Moscow, the two most powerful places in Russia, through some of the most neglected villages and, and gave us a sense of contrast in modern Russia today. Welcome to Orsher Monastery. The other thing you need to know is that even 17 years after the fall of the Soviet Union, bureaucracy is a huge hit here. Not only was it somewhat tricky to get my own press pass, but because of a rather ridiculous anti-terrorism law passed last year, each hotel confiscates the passport of any foreigner for an evening to register your information, presumably with the local branch of the FSB, which is the successor to the KGB. This need to check in with the local registrars was particularly tough because we really needed to be flexible. In fact, the best parts of the trip were all pure serendipity. We happened on this village called Happiness, where everyone was actually pretty pissed off, whether it was about unemployment or their own bad health. Strangely, though, they all seem to really like their President Putin. And how President Putin? How do you think? President Putin is a great man. Yes? Yes. And why? Because there are so many people. He has done a lot for Russia. In the village of Miednaya, for example, we found a rather amazing Italian cheesemaker from Calabria, a guy who lived in a walled-off compound with his Russian wife and his 13-year-old child. For her amusement, uh, he had actually bought a camel from Samara in southern Russia, and the camel was just sort of hanging out behind the barn with the cows and the horses. There was also the unexpectedly crystal clear morning at the Nilov Island Monastery, where monks played bells like they were being controlled by some sort of divine puppet master. We also happened upon this Eastern Orthodox monk on the shoulder of the Federal Highway. After nine years of wandering Russia's roads, he looked more like Fedein than clergy. All of this you can find just by taking the time to explore some of Russia's back roads. And with any luck you'll encounter, as we did on our road trip, a guy like Father Alexander of Rashtino, who gave us a finishing touch on our trip. A baptism of our Lada, complete with incense and holy water on the engine block and choice scripture for travelers on Russia's dangerous roads. I don't know if that did the trick, but we did make it safely on our journey. Radi Boga. For Time.com, this is Senior Editor Nathan Thornburg.